Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I'm Brink and you're listening to the Voice of Insanity, bringing you an opinion about a video game. Today we're going to be talking about conflicts, revolutionary space battles, and I gotta say right off the bat, this is an early access review, so bear that in mind as you watch the rest of this video. There is enough content presented and it is polished enough that I feel comfortable presenting an opinion, but if things change over the course of the next couple of months, I will release a follow-up video, which will be linked here if it does happen, and that will just cover any of the changes and whether or not that influenced my opinions. Conflicts is actually the second game brought to us by the developer Artifice Studio. Their first one was a hybrid defense game named, if you're American and bad at pronouncing things, Sang Freud, and if you actually pronounce things correctly, I believe it's Song Fua. It was known for its music and atmosphere and bringing together incredibly unique game elements. Essentially, it was a tower defense game crossed with a third-person strategy action game, and it took place in a Canadian lumberjack colony fighting werewolves. It was a one-of-a-kind game and very highly reviewed by just about anybody who played it, and also, depending on who you asked, it was highly difficult. So this company does have a reasonably good history, at least with this one game. Now, Conflict's Revolutionary Space Battles carries on the tradition of one-of-a-kind settings. Conflicts takes place in 1700s in space stories from an alternate universe where Leonardo da Vinci discovered metamatter contained in egg yolks. This launched the world into a wondrous technological age and naturally into war over the world's chicken supplies and therefore egg supplies. So the different world powers launched into space and began chickaforming planets in order to breed more chickens. Chickens evolved themselves and then revolted, and the game launches into the midst of a vast war between the four factions that call this game home. Now, Conflicts blends the flick genre with the RTS game genre. By flick, I mean games that use a physics-based engine in a two-dimensional environment to launch ships around. It's an inertia-based system where you can collide with asteroids, planets, fling your ships around gravity wells, it leads to a lot of chaos, and there have been many games that took this form, a lot of them incredibly fun. And this one kind of blends that with an auto-firing laser system, where you have guns on the ships that vary in strength and range by the ship, so it kind of adds another layer to that. Additionally, there is an RTS component there. There is an economy. You have to chickaform planets to create more metamatter, which you then use to carry out actions. Unit production and factories are there. You have to use a capital ship and battleships to create more combat units to fling into the fight. The strategy is there with rationing metamatter to use for launching movements, using abilities and reaching out with special attacks, along with timing your cooldowns to be able to interact with your surroundings properly. So this game is attempting to blend a lot of different components together and we'll address how that works out through the rest of this video. There's four factions, like I said, which vary tremendously in regards to strategy and gameplay. Each bases its attacks on something different, such as electric shock or kinetic force, and each has a different set of tools to manipulate the map, such as solar wind to move asteroid fields, or impassable exhaust trails that you can lay down to trap units. The variety is pretty large in what this game brings to the table. There's a fairly well-developed story mode to work your way through. I played about half of it while I was uh, getting familiar with this game, and it took me two and a half, so I would figure about five hours or less if you just bull your way through it. There is a multiplayer, but like most indie and early access releases, it's hard to find people to play against. However, they do use a planned daily event schedule that will concentrate the player base, so I'm hoping that on full release, there'll be enough people who pick up the game that maybe the playing field will be decent, but I'm not holding out too much hope. The versus AI function is where you're going to be spending most of your time. It's incredibly solid, featuring free-for-all, 2v2, or 1v1 on a fairly good variety of maps. So that is where I spent most of my time playing and where the footage for this video comes from. Now, before I get on into a opinions and playability and what I think. Remember that this is only an early access title, so what follows may change. Does the concept of this game work, trying to blend all of these different features together into one playing experience? Hell yes. 
combat is tight and the UI works reasonably well with everything in easy reach. There's a lot of variety, not only between the factions, but also in the different methods you can use within the factions. There's about 10 different ship types for each of the races, plus all the special abilities available to each one, making for a wide range of options with which to attack. Unit abilities are hotkeyed to numbers, and the selection-deselection process works properly, so you're not going to have too much trouble keeping control of your units. The physics are well done, with gravity slingshots working incredibly well, and asteroid collisions easy to pull off in order to just wreak havoc among the enemy armadas. In fact, the battlefield can get quite chaotic if there's two to three players pulling operations in the same area. The maps are sized well, so the combat is inevitable from the start of the game, but not so close quartered that you feel harassed point blank. Games are going to last you, I'd say, 15 to 30 minutes in the multiplayer or the two versus two functions. So you're not going to be getting into incredibly long matches unless you choose to drag it out. The game is well balanced as far as collisions versus abilities versus weapons is concerned. And I really didn't experience anything that was broken as far as being over or underpowered. Each faction has a unique set of tools to work with and the other factions that you're going to be playing against have their own tools and counters to deal with everything that's thrown at them. So I really didn't run into anything that was game breaking. Now as far as what needs improved, I just gave you a long list of positives. The only real negatives that I have as far as the actual gameplay is concerned is the fact that the overall experience feels a bit rough. There's some little hitches in some of the unit selection features. There's a couple of things that are a little difficult to get along with, but I feel like those are being addressed in the patches that are coming out. So honestly, I'm not too worried about it. The actual gameplay was fun enough that I was able to just completely gloss over the control difficulties and learn to work with them. And I was able to do everything that I wanted to do regardless. The only major change that I would say, other than polishing how things function, uh, would be to add some more hotkeys or possibly hotkeys to save certain units that you're using a lot. Right now, you pretty much have to click around the mini map or zoom out to find units and then click on those individual units and move them. So there's not really any quick way to jump around between ships and get jobs done very efficiently. That brings me to the strategic zoom. Yes, this is a flick game with a strategic zoom option, believe it or not. Although it's not very well implemented, I feel like that's another thing that could use a lot of work. The scroll in and out speed is very, very slow and cannot be adjusted. And the snap always goes back to the spot you originated from. There's no snap to mouse feature, which I feel like would improve this tremendously. Also, the quickest way to get around is to zoom out and to double click on a spot on the map. But that immediately takes you to full zoom in and it gets a little difficult to get a frame of reference on the map when you're trying to hit targets that are farther away. I feel like this is being addressed, like I said before, there has already been a patch which made things a little bit easier, but it's just something you need to be aware of jumping into this game um, that might be slightly off-putting but can be worked around. So, that brings me to the rest of the options, video options, etc. All of that is pretty much unfinished, so I'm not really going to give you an opinion on it. Um, I feel like that will be brought together very well. And the only comment that I would have in that regard is that the options need to be available inside the game, not just in the main menu. Because if you want to change something, you're stuck with it until the next round, as far as hotkeys and that kind of thing is concerned. But again, I think that those concerns are being raised with the developer, and they will probably take care of that before the game goes into full release. I think that is everything that I had on this. Um, Overall, I feel like the positives vastly outweigh the negatives. Even in its current state, I would feel comfortable picking up this game because you've got the five hours of content in just the story mode, which I found pretty entertaining as far as the art style and how things were carried out. Maybe I have a unique sense of humor, maybe you won't like it, but me personally, I was highly entertained. And then you've got several hours of play in the AI functions and that kind of thing. 
bring a buddy in with the multiplayer system and I feel like this game could thrive from some competitive multiplayer. Um, there is a lot of hysterical situations that you can push yourself into, especially when you get into where you're attaching tons of different units to a single frigate for the discounted move price and then you're launching it across the map you end up colliding with asteroids colliding with other groups of units the physics take over and units just fly all over the map it is hilarious and I, every time i picked up a game i ran into new situations it never played out exactly the same twice in a row so i feel like there's a lot of potential variety there even with the content that's just in this game now that being said, the polish is not perfect and you're going to have to get over a couple of little elements in the UI that could be easier to work with. But if you choose to pick up this game, I would just be very frank with the developers that are active on the forums and just go ahead and bring that up. And I feel like, especially considering the gaming experience that they turned out with Song Fua, um, they should be able to whip this up into great shape and I feel like this is going to be a unique and a good buy. So that is my opinion and I'm sticking to it. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, hit thumbs down and please tell me why. I need feedback on these reviews. I just started doing this kind of thing and I want to improve it so that I can bring you guys good, useful content. So help me out and tell me how I can improve. That's gonna wrap it up for me. I will see you guys in the next video.